All right, so I'm really excited about this one. This is uh, the new engine that's gonna be going in the lab rat back there. We get picked up this kit from Bishop Buell Racing Engines. Uh, most people know Russ Pottinger. He is the top guy when it comes to building Jeep stroker motors. And he put all this together for us. It's one of his kits. It, it uh, is one you actually assemble yourself, which is a new one for me. Believe it or not, I've been playing with Jeeps for 15 years now we've been in business, but I'm primarily a fabricator. I'm not an engine builder, which is why I went to Russ. So he put together this kit for us. Um, he machined the block for us, though normally uh, most people would actually use their existing engine block, take it to a, a local machine shop to have it machined to the specs that Russ gives them. Um, Russ also put together his beautiful custom machine cylinder head. The, the combustion chambers have all been, been machined out. He uh, smoothed out the, all the ports. It's got LS valves in it, titanium valve springs. I mean, just beautiful stuff. We got Russ's custom scat rods, these gorgeous pistons that, I don't know, I feel bad putting them inside where no one will ever see them again because they're just such nice parts. But uh, like I said, I'm not an engine builder. So the reason I'm actually doing this video is to show everyone that they can do it too. Um, that said, I got a couple of friends that are coming over to help me because, well, I'm not an engine builder. And here we have Cal doing such important things like masking off the cylinder head. It's what he's best qualified for. So Mark, what are we doing here? So these, sometimes the bushing gets a little damaged right here on the edge. So I'm taking the piston pin, putting it in just a little bit, and wiggling it around to loosen it up. So it has a nice smooth free floating. And that's just from the manufacturing process when it gets pressed in there? Correct. All right, so what are we up to now? All right, we're gonna check our ring end gaps here. So placing a ring in the board here. And using a piston to push it down. Make sure it's level. Feeler gauge, check the end goal. All right, Mark, looks like we got uh, a whole stack of different rings here. Tell us uh, what's going on. All right, well, now. Since we've gone through and measured our ring end gaps and everything's within specs, we're going to start assembling the pistons. So first we start with our base of our oil control ring. And that goes all the way in that bottom slot All the way in the bottom. There. So the way it goes, you have your top ring, your middle ring, your bottom ring, and the box is labeled 1, 2, and 3. Okay. So you get center in first, and you grab your lower. It's going to go on the bottom here. And you just kind of spiral it on. So the bottom oil control ring installed. Now are the top and bottom oil control rings there the same yes, they same are. part? Yeah, they're the exact same. So put that on there. And I like to spin them a little bit so that the, the ring gaps don't line up. There's actually instructions that outlay how you're supposed to do that. So, since these rings 
if you look at them, they actually have a dot right here on the top. So this is our this is our second ring. So if you notice, it has a dot on here, and the dot gets installed up. All right. This is going down on the second ring. That's the second ring. Our top rings do not have dots on them, so they can be installed in either orientation. There we go. So usually what I do is I run these 180 out from each other when I install them. Alright, so that's all so that's ready one, to get slid in now, huh? One piston assembled, ready to go. All right, guys, so turns out we ran into a bit of a stumbling block here. We, we started assembling all the components. We got this whole set of beautiful pistons on the rods, got the rings on there. We were just getting ready to drop the crank in. We discovered that uh, this thrust bearing here, yeah, well, it's the wrong one. The box is right, part number's right, parts in the box aren't the right parts, so Russ at, at Bishop Buell, he gave us the right box. Somebody back at the factory put the wrong parts in there. So unfortunately, none of the local stores had the right ones. So we're now going on a drive, but we're still gonna be uh, trying to get this thing done today. And fingers crossed, it, it's gonna happen. All right, so after much driving around to get the right parts, we have bearings. Yay! And they appear to be the right ones. So, uh, any special tricks here? No, bearings just go in the shells dry. The ones with the holes line up with the holes down here. The ones without the holes go in the caps. Simple enough. Yeah. The holes are where your oil comes through. Yep. Lubricates everything. If you mix them around, it makes horrible noises. All right, so now we got the crankshaft in, and we're gonna check our bearing tolerances. If you look at that little green stripe there, got little pieces of plastic gauge on all of our bearing surfaces. We are going to use to make sure that everything is in the right spec. So we just tightened down all of our main caps and now you can see that that plastic gauge has been smashed and it's all fattened out and they give you is this little guide here it's actually the wrapper I don't know if you can see the numbers but um, the fatter the plastic gauge gets the less bearing clearance you have and you use that the, the little stripes there on the wrapper that's your your measuring tool Depending on how wide it is, it tells you how tight your tolerance is. In this case, it needs to be between 0 0.001 and 0 0.025. And we're right about 0 0.002 on all of them. So we are all good to go.
Ah, well, it's been kind of a long first day, and unfortunately we didn't get nearly as much stuff done as we wanted to, mainly thanks to that one misboxed bearing. We ended up having to drive all over the place trying to find it, and in the end, through all the mishaps and everything, we lost like five hours of the day trying to get the right bearing and, and uh, keep it moving. But we did make a lot of progress. We got all of our rods and pistons put together, all the rings on, the crank is in, and we got four of the six pistons fully installed and attached to the crank. And uh, I'll probably work a little bit later into the night, get the last two in there before calling it quits. But uh, that's where we sit right now. Would really like to be farther along, but hey, that is what it is. You know, sometimes you just get the wrong thing in the box and it's a Sunday and nothing's open. So you deal with it, you move on, and uh, we'll get it rolling later. So here we are, it's the end of the night, and I've got one last piston to install. And I figured this is a pretty important process, so I should probably show you how it's done. Um, you'll notice I've got our ring compressor on here. This is like the cheapest ring compressor in the world. Uh, let's see, how much was this thing? Yeah, it was like 10 bucks. So, you know, special tools, but not expensive special tools. And, uh, you know, for that price, might as well just buy it. I think you can rent them as well. I just bought it. Um, so we wrap it around and it compresses those rings that we installed earlier, keeps them nice and tight so that when we push the piston down to the cylinder they don't catch. If you don't use a compressor like this, you're probably going to mess up one of those rings and cause yourself a big headache down the road. So we're going to go ahead and get this done. I've already put a bunch of oil on the rings, oiled up the outside of the piston real well, and I also oiled the the cylinder, so everything should slide together really nicely. Uh, first things first as well, orientation does matter. The, uh, the side that's machined out more, it's going towards, towards the lifters. So that's a, that's a key thing there. You don't want to get it backwards because if you have it the wrong way around, your valve opens, hits the piston, that's pretty much the end of your day. You'll be really upset. So we're just going to take this and we're going to carefully slide it down into the cylinder and it is a you know pretty snug fit should be we're going to take our little mallet and since this spring compressor it's just a basically a sheet of of metal that's wrapped around in a band yeah you kind of gotta get everything all flat and straightened out and you want to look across the deck here make sure it's sitting nice and flat and square Make sure your piston is nice and straight so that when the, uh, when the rod goes down through, it goes onto the crank, doesn't scratch anything. Then we're just gonna take the end of our mallet, just gently tap our piston down. You can actually hear each ring click into place. There we go. Spring compressor or uh, ring compressor comes off. Pistons down in the bore. Now I'm going to reach underneath. I'm going to keep tapping the piston down. We've got our uh, we've got our crank turned all the way down so that the uh, the crank is is at bottom dead center on this on this piston. So for right now, I've got about halfway down. So it can, it's not engaging the crank yet. I'm gonna go ahead and roll this thing over, so we can oil up the uh, oil up the bearing, and then we'll get it all bolted together. So right here, you can see our rod is nice and loose. We're gonna get our assembly lube, and I already pre-installed the bearing in there. It's already in place. I'm just going to squirt a little lube in here and then take my finger, wipe it around the bearing real well. 
make sure that there's plenty of lube on there and it's covering all the surfaces. Really can't, can't have too much assembly lube for that first startup. And then I'm just gonna hold the, hold the rod centered, continue tapping the piston down. And when it gets close, start going slow, make sure that we don't scratch the crank at all. Make sure everything's nice and centered up where it should be. There, we're all the way home. We take our bearing cap over here, the rod cap, a little assembly lube there, wipe it around. And these guys here, it's hard to see, but they actually have little alignment sleeves, act kind of like dowel pins. They go around the bore of the bolt and they go into a little, little machined relief there in the rod. So that helps get them nice and square and indexes them in place. And they also have on the rod, there's a number stamped in there. It matches the number on the rod because these are all machined as a unit. So each one has a different number on it. That way you can't, or you shouldn't mix up your, uh, your bearing caps as long as you're paying attention. So this guy just slides down on here. We grab our bolts, which these are special ARP high strength fasteners and they get installed with a special grease on them. It's a special bolt grease and they get torqued in this case to 45 foot pounds. Snug them up. And it's always good to go in increments, so I'm going to start by torquing these to 25 foot pounds first, and then we'll bump up to uh, 45 for the final torque. All right, that's that. That is our final piston installed. So we now have all six of them in there, the cranks in, and uh, hopefully we'll get some more work done on this thing soon because I'm really looking forward to seeing it run. But for now, it's time to go to bed. It's been a long day. Have a good one.